uh, events and so on. And something that I noticed in the talk and in the comments I got after the talk um, was that we're actually not so bad at getting people into uh, the project, but uh, we're, we seem to be losing quite a few on the way. Um, one thing that kind of made me think so was the high number of uh, female package maintainers and the low number of Debian developers because apparently a whole lot of women decide that it's actually uh, worthwhile to learn how to, how to package, to get their packages into Debian and maintain them, but then they don't do this last step and become Debian developers. So um, there seems to be, as said in the, in the talk, there seems to be a number of reasons that keeps them away. And also something else that I think goes in the same direction and also came up to, uh, after the talk was that we had some feedback from people who uh, serve or served in the mentor program saying that they, they actually did get assigned mentees, um, but there seemed to be a high number of mentors who just basically lost their mentees along the way like they dropped out, they lost contact, uh, communication died out, and something like that. So I thought it might, might be a, a nice idea to use this time now to uh, try and find ideas how we can not only like lure people into the project, but actually keep them at it. Like to, to make sure that if, um, say something, is not right with the mentor-mentee relationship, or maybe they, they feel overtaxed, or maybe there's a, there are different expectations, like they're looking for reassurance, but what they get is technical advice, all, all such stuff. Um, I thought it might be a good idea to, to collect some ideas how to um, more closely hold on to the people that we actually have. Do you think that's a feasible idea? Not if you do. <laughs> okay. Um, it's not working anyway, the video stream. Yeah, Marga just mentioned that the mentor, about the mentor program, which you mentioned. Uh, we also have very little information about it. So, yeah, I'm we, just relaying what's, what mm -hmm. she's saying. Okay, so. We, we should advertise it more, is what you mean? Or what she means? <laughs> Possibly. I need to type back. To ah, yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I don't know from what time the feedback that I got about the mentoring program was, whether it was like two years ago or two weeks ago. So, um, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe the mentoring program is a good point to start because it's quite well defined. I mean, people do approach us by, by their own accord. They say, well, I'd like, like to get a mentor, they're assigned a mentor. And then I think the usual thing that ensues is that a few mails um, are exchanged uh, of a very general nature saying, well, so um, I'm your mentor, I'm, I'm this and that person, and this is what I do. And the mentee then introduces introduces herself, and then I think often you already get to a dead stop because then the mentor says, so what do you want to know? And the mentee is very much like, well, I don't know, anything, you know, like Debian, and so maybe it would be, would be a good idea to give the mentoring program a bit more, more structure, you know. Um, to so that it's not actually left to mentor and the mentee to come up with a kind of program or agenda that they want to follow. Um, Ma Marga is talking still on, uh, on IRC. She mentioned that basically none of us knows what's going on with the mentor program except the mentor admin. So she says basically, if I understand well, that we need to advertise more the mentor program inside I would say ourselves, so those people who feel involved in Demian Women. Mm. Yeah, I think so far really uh, the only place that the mentoring program is mentioned is the web pages, uh, the Debian Women web pages, and then we usually always m like mention it when somebody does a talk. Um, so yeah, I guess advertising it a bit more is never uh, a bad thing to do. So, but yeah, 
as I said, like in, in, in this particular session, my issue is not so much getting people in, but keeping them. You're like, um, I guess one of the issues that came up the other day is a thing that's actually a more general problem in Debian. So, I mean, it came up in terms of the mentors program of people, maybe we should be more actively pushing people, but it's not even true actually in, if you look at the expectations of new people with regard to the NM process, for example, yeah. people expect, if they arrive and haven't read, yet read all the documentation, they kind of assume that there'll be somewhere where they sign up, but then someone says, you're ready to do this, you're ready to do this, why don't you go and do this next? Mm. Um, and they, again, they expect that if they've got a sponsor, their sponsor should, I mean, lots of people assume that maybe their sponsor and AM should be kind of the same thing and guiding them and pushing them and so on. Of, I don't think it's necessarily realistic for us to go and reprogram NM and so on to do that because there's, there are reasons why it's a bit different. But maybe some of that is what people are looking for in a mentoring thing as well. I mean, obviously, it's easy, and it's, we're, we're kind of easier it's easier for us to find a mentor for a specific technical topic because exactly. then you know who it should do it and you can pair them up sensibly and so on. Yeah, I guess that's um, really uh, one of the main problems that, that kind, I currently see in, in the mentoring program is that the, I mean, the mentor basically agrees to be a mentor because he, th he or she thinks that, oh sure, I can ask a few, I can answer a few questions about Debian and packaging. And the, the mentees are actually expecting much more. They actually uh, expect some kind of agenda or program or something. And then, like, us I think the usual problem is that the mentee doesn't really manage to come up with questions of her own. And the mentors, uh, I mean, usually the, the people who sign up as mentors are the people who sign up for everything. <laughs> so they are really busy people and they really cannot sit down and come up with a curriculum or something. So um, it might be worthwhile to maybe provide them with one that they can go through with their mentees or something. Um, speaking as a mentor who has had almost the exact experience that you describe, <laughs> I would appreciate something like that. Um, and we have that for NM, um, and that is one of the ways that people get, get uh, sort of moved along through NM because we actually do have a set program of questions that should be asked. Um, and I, and I, I think it makes it easier on the AM. I've never been an AM, but it seems like it makes it more straightforward for the AM to know what's coming next and what they should be doing next if they, if they aren't sure. So I, I would appreciate that, having something so like that. Guidelines. Maybe could one of the, the people taking notes just write down that we should try to come up with a kind of like mentoring curriculum um, in the time to come? <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know how really mentor program works, but uh, uh, maybe the people are rejected, I mean mentors, uh, because uh, there are people that don't even read documentation or man pages, and then who wants to tell them everything, well, maybe to have program that says, well, not specifically, but uh, first thing uh, what mentor should do, just give the reference to read this, read that. Mm. And when someone doesn't do that, when, what should you do? What read them well, of course. for them what, or what? Yeah, of course. But I guess yeah, it's. it's and, uh, I'm sorry. I don't think we we should push people around. Why don't you be UDD or OBD? Well, there's <laughs> we there's, that, there's pushing and there's motivating. Um, yes, maybe just. I mean, we don't want to bully anybody into being a DD, obviously. Yes. But there's there are there are those shy people who hope that. Who are just sit there hoping that somebody will push them saying, why don't you become a DD? And then they can go like, ah, oh, I don't know. And you ask them again and actually they want to. So I think it's a, it's, a, it's a thin line. I mean, we don't want to bully anybody into anything. But I do think that there's a whole lot of people who could maybe benefit from a little stuff. I think Enrico has been also... Uh, yeah, I wanted to relay again from IOC, uh, someone with, name, with the nickname Berta Gaz uh, mentioned that uh, an idea could be to have some Debian women sprint to gather women interested in Debian, share knowledge and motivation. Uh, it might help joining the project or something. Yeah. Maybe also adding my own ideas. Uh, this mentor mentee stuff uh, mm. could maybe with meeting in real life something like that could work better. If, I don't know if possible. I mean, we did have we did have uh, back squashing parties in 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 the very past past, 
We did have like Debian women back squashing parties, uh, but they were virtual. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Enrico from the new maintainer process, which has been mentioned a few times. Um, and it, during this conversation about mentors, it occurred to me that um, that there's some. Uh, I I feel there's some fundamental problem. Uh, because uh, in mentors, we are basically establishing a relationship in which somebody from Debian spoon feeds or something people who are not. Um, and uh, uh, maybe that's a misrepresentation of mentors, but it's this kind of direction of the flow of information sort of proactively pushed towards people, yeah. which is not how Debian works in any other of its parts. So, uh, if somebody joins Debian in that way, it, it doesn't they set the wrong expectation about what's going to happen next? And, um, and, and another thing is that we're used to think of people joining Debian because they need to, or they like to. They have some specific thing in Debian they'd like to work on, because, you know, Debian's a duocracy and so on. And, um, and there's so many groups one can join. And, uh, well, we, there's the Debian Mentors project for packaging, there's the web team and publicity uh, and so on. Um, and so w w I wonder if, if Debian Mentors could have um, the, the, um, the job of helping people find the right group to work with in Debian. It's like, what do you like? Then, okay, so you like this. Why don't you get in touch with that group? I and say you'd like to help and, and teach people how to say they'd like to help and maybe give support when the reply they get is not what they expect mm -hmm. and explain why. Can a mentor into, into the social in working of Debian? Because we cannot teach how Debian works. Um, I believe it's similar to teach people what Tao is. Mm -hmm. Debian works in a similar way in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, so, but helping people find a place in Debian they're comfortable with, mm -hmm. and then that place is usually perfectly able to do the rest of the technical mentoring. I, I think uh, I partially agree with that. Like, I've had the same thing where I really just pointed a lot of uh, people to, to, respect, to the respective groups, saying, well, um, if you want to be, become a translator, please join the respective mailing list to say hi, and so. But um, there's also uh, a, a group of people who basically approach you and they want to join Debian and you say, okay, um, what field of Debian would you like to work in? And what they say is, um, oh, I don't know, wherever I'm needed, I just want to help. You know, they're just like this super undirected, just wanting to help kind of attitude. And um, so, they don't have this particular thing, they don't have a beef with a certain package that they want to, want to see taken care of, or a certain language that's not supported well enough. They just see Debian as a whole, and they want to be a part of it, and they, they, they want to help in any way they can. So basically, what they do is like, here, you walk up, at t you walk up to front desk and you say, I've got some spare time, what can I do for you? And then they'll just send you on an errand or tell you, give you something to do. And that's actually something that does not work in the Debian project. There's not, but there's a front desk, of course, but there's no place that you can just go and say, um, I'd like to help. This is my set of skills, what can I do? Um, also with these people, usually they're not yet programmers or packagers, and so, I, need, I feel that we maybe need to have an answer for those people as well. I mean, the other ones are really easy because you point them to the group. Maybe you take someone from the group aside and say, I've got a new one here. Could you just make sure that he or she is welcomed and kind of shown the ropes? But yeah, I, I think those who are actually also fail or not, not, well, fail is a hard word, but don't get along well with the mentoring program are those who are, don't, do not have a specific task that they join for, they just want to like help and, and they don't know how. So it's, does maybe anyone have an idea how to, what to do with these people? I, I, well, I, I agree that, it, I mean, a good thing is if we can point people to the right group in wider Debian, though I just point out that one thing we've done in Debian Women in the past that did work to get people involved was to have some kind of mini projects 
that started off within the Debian Women fold. So, for example, there was building the acronym dictionary. I mean, even think things like working on the Debian web website, web Debian Women website itself, yeah. things like this, which obviously are not. You don't necessarily want people to end up having that as their only involvement in Debian. Yeah. But if people are just starting off, it's kind of nice if they can have something that they feel is, well, where everyone involved is trying to get other people involved and is open to this kind of mentoring approach and so on. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a bit easier than compared to just saying, um, I don't know, the, the kernel team really needs some help. Go so and work on the, go and work with them. So maybe it would be good to collect a set of. Thin issues or things to do that that can then be tackled by uh, a mentor and the me uh, and the mentee. So if the mentee says, "Oh, I don't know," the, men the mentor has a set of uh, things to to choose from or to pick from, and can say, "Well, why don't we tackle this and and try try ourselves on that?" I think you need to do both have a sh list of short tasks, but also uh, uh, define the larger part of the project where the mentee will join because, well, all teams could have sort of small tasks to join, but yeah. uh, uh, usually it requires quite some monitoring to, to start and uh, you don't want to invest time if that person is only going to do that task and then go away. Mm. That's at least my own experience. I tried several times to give small tasks to people and say, oh, help me. They sent a first patch and never show up again. And I did spend several rounds of emails exchange with those people to get them to produce that proper patch. So, so maybe it would really be worth to like have a kind of like practice projects that are rather Debian women internal, maybe even like the acronym dictionary, um, so that people can like try themselves on it. And if they feel that, for example, translation really is their thing, or web pages, WML, whatever, and they, they felt they, they've tried this and they've been somewhat successful, and then we, after that we can then maybe point them on to the teams and say, well... Oh, I would love if you could prepare trainee and give them back to me when they <laughs> good. <laughs> well, I mean, we don't, we don't, I mean, we don't want our mentees to, you know, get, get some kind of bad reputation or something like, oh no, it's a Debian women mentee. Oh. So, <laughs> so, I mean, we're doing everyone a favor if we do train them properly before sending them out into the teams where they are actually expected to work quick and work well and all that. So maybe we could, um, we could uh, just take down in the minutes that we might try and find a few projects or collect a few projects that uh, could serve well as a selection of things to do <laughs> with a mentor and a mentee. Yeah, another, another remark from I see from uh, Marga. Uh, for people who don't know Marga, this is Margarita Manterola. Um, she's mentioning about this mini project stuff, etc. Uh, that, uh, that, yeah, that's good idea, but it always needs someone to lead them, and otherwise it fails. Of well, course, yes, of which course. Which is obvious. I'm sorry to. Come back yeah, and I it. know it's, <laughs> but that such is the nature of virtual communication. It's not real time. Yeah, but uh, well, I guess yes. Yeah, such a such a mini project always should be tackled with a mentor on the side. Um, that that for sure. Uh, maybe it would also be a good idea to, um, like, at repeating times, contact the mentors and the mentees. Maybe even individually asking, like, so how is it going? Are you still at it? Are you, um, are you getting along well? Is there anything that you feel is not working out? So, as, so that maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm imagining this, but maybe it's, uh, it often happens that there's, or maybe it does happen that there's a mentee who's not happy with her mentor and doesn't really know whom to turn to, and then she, she just goes away. And so maybe if you, like every, I don't know, every month or every two months or something. I mean, this is really a slow communication going on mostly. We can just like, you know, butt in and say, hi, how's it going? Everything okay with you guys? Um, are you still at it? Something like that. I can see if I can make this a bit more readable. I'm afraid not. Um, right, so... Maybe to, to move on to the other topic, which is really not that far away, uh, 
would be the, the, the ladies who are already Debian maintainers and have so far um, found no use or no reason or no motivation or no courage or whatever to uh, go the whole way and become Debian developers? Do we, I mean, maybe the first question should be, do we consider this a problem at all? Or do we say, uh, as long as they're contributors, we don't care if they're maintainers or translators or developers, and we really just want them to become developers because that's such a nice, easy number to count and such a, such a good way, such an easy way to show success. I mean, may, if that's the case, um, I'm okay with that. <laughs> if we say, as long as they contribute, we are happy. But my personal feeling is, as I said in the talk, that being a DD is not only like carrying this kind of like status laden Debian badge on your breast, it also means like to really identify with the project, to become a citizen of the project, to, to vote, to pr propose votes, to, and all that, to elect a leader. So, in my view, it's something that you should do, but if you as a group tell me, no, as long as they contribute, you're fine. I'm fine with that also. I just want to um, basically affirm what you've, what you've said. I'm DKG. Um, I, I do think that, the, that people can contribute and can significantly influence our culture because we are open enough without being an official Debian developer. But speaking as someone who plans to participate in future votes, I would really like it if the electorate was um, more balanced in terms of who's actually using the project. Okay. Um, and, I, and so I actually do think that it's, it's important for people to continue through the process and make it to Debian developer status. Other, other thoughts on that? Or? Yeah, this is, this is something I really think is important. And this is a reaction to your talk of the other day when you, you, you mentioned about being or not being a DD and uh, several women in the project are doing a very good job without being a DD. I think, I really think uh, these women should really consider be, becoming DD. Just becoming a kind of role model or, you know, for, even for us to be able to to say that we have that many women, D, female DD, uh, that I, I think this is much more important than we think. It's, well, I'm a, bit, uh, I'm, a bit in, I'm a bit in two minds about this because I really don't want to, you know, like introduce uh, any kind of like two-class society, like there are the DDs and then there are those who just contribute and they're not like proper DDs and stuff like that. So I'm trying to be careful not to make it sound that way, but as said, I do feel that for, for any contributor, becoming a DD is actually a beneficial thing uh, in, in, in many dimensions, not least, I mean, uh, for the purpose of the Debian Women Project, it's just a female contributor has so much more visibility if she carries the at Debian org. Um, just, I mean, it's, maybe it's not such a, bit, such a difference for the actual contributor, but for us as a project, um, it's just, you know, you, if, when you see the Debian people conversing among themselves, maybe, and you see all those with the Debian.org addresses, uh, it's just nice to see a few female names pop up every now and then. So, um, oh, I, I'm just... I totally agree with that uh, about the visibility. I myself, as I, as I said in the talk, I uh, didn't apply yet, and um, I think before I, I really didn't care about that. I didn't. I really felt that I contribute and I don't need to be a DD, and I, I always felt that I was, how can I say, um, recognized for that. Uh, but now I see that, well, uh, sometimes people approach me on IRC, a uh, woman, because they know that I, I am a woman and, and they, they don't know if I am a DD or not. But maybe if I was a DD, I would have more. <laughs> I, uh, I, now I see that. It gives you authority. I mean, we can, we can name it that. It's yeah, but it's not only the authority, but. I'm, I'm starting to figure out that maybe, because it was not my case, but maybe there are some women that really uh, feel more comfortable talking with other women. 
Yes. And they talk with me because that they know that I am a woman. And well, so. well, it's my experience that being a DD um, and talking to lots of girls and women of all ages who somehow in one way or another consider joining the project, um, I've had the experience that as a DD, they really, if I say something, they really take this as coming from the project. So if I say, listen, I am a Debian developer, I've been for a couple of years and I can tell you it's fine, it's okay, it's a great job to do. Um, they are ready to believe me because, um, yeah, I'm speaking from my own. While, I don't know, maybe if you're not and you say, really, you can become a DD, it's, it's a great thing to be. They might not be as convinced or, oh, I don't know. Uh, um, could you oh. pass that to Penny? She's been on it for a while. <laughs> I just wanted to say maybe we have a social problem here, which is, so you said, let's name it authority. Um, maybe some women feel that that's not actually something that they're justified to have. So I think it could be that um, many women that could or should become DDs don't because they don't feel that it's justified because maybe they only have a few packages or they're not as involved as they want to and they don't feel like they really deserve that authority or status. Um, well, this is the point where we point to the non-uploading DDs, of course, again, um, saying that you really don't have to have that many packages to, to become a DD. Like, I think I've got four, which is like really not that much, uh, and three of them are super tiny. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I think this is right, but I think it's a, it's a conception that's maybe endemic amongst women in technology. So you mean like... There's a, there's a conception that people feel you need to be worthy of DD-ness. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think, I guess one of, really, one of the things we need to do as the Debian Women Project is to really, really debunk the DD status. Um, a bit. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I, I also think there, there's another thing on this. Uh, yes, many, uh, the mission of uh, the Debian Women Project is to motivate uh, women to contribute more and to make Debian more uh, friendly in general. But then again, uh, well, being an DD is a commitment. Yes. Many people want to contribute, but don't want to be so committed. So, uh, I mean, I'm not saying uh, let's uh, stop uh, motivating people to become DD, but not everybody will. Yeah. The, the well, that's why I, why I always have this thing in, when I do a Debian women talk, I always make a point of pointing out that Debian women is not about affirmative action. It's not about getting as many women shoved into DD status as possible uh, as long as their packages meet some minimum amount of quality. Um, so, you, yeah. yeah. When we talked about uh, worthiness to be a DD earlier, I, I, I think we should remember that this is not uh, just uh, not just a women-specific issue, for instance. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, Jonas um, Smidegaard um, Beca only became a DD after somebody told him, yes, you're worthy of it and you should, you should go forward. And I think if we, if we try to make this clear, not just only to women, but to, to anyone, it will benefit both genders and that would be a good thing. Well, um, it's, it, 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 it's definitely a problem that people think, uh, I'm not worthy of this. Um, and yeah. it's, well, it's, it's been uh, uh, one of the nice qualities, I think, of the Debian Women Project, that all the things we did have always, we did them for women, but they, in the end they always turned out benefiting the project as a whole, so um, the, if be it the mentoring program or the stuff in the wiki or the IRC tutorials, uh, we aim them at women, but we always have at least half of the attendees being male, so I think I mean, such, such people, be they male or female, would probably benefit from that either way. Uh, well, you say people think that they are not worthy. Well, it's because uh, maybe they know the amount of their knowledge. I mean, I, I don't know what what is uh, what do we supposed to know to be a DD. I mean, I have one package. Oh yes, I want to be DD. Of course, I want to be DD. Uh, first time I installed Debian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to be DD so much, but of course I cannot, and uh, I still cannot because uh, when someone uh, come to me and says, oh, you're a DD, please help me with this. And I say, oh, but I don't know that. Well, ask well, that, someone else. That, that's actually <laughs> not something that you need to do. So um, it's totally okay. one of the few, one of the things that you say most often as a DD is, I'm sorry, that's not my package. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> there's, there is, yeah, there is this, this feeling among the world that as a DD, you ba you're basically a, a Debian wizard and you can do everything. 
um, but nobody can really. Um, I mean, there are the there are those DDs who, who do the kernel, and and they are super clever towards kernel things. But if you ask them how to change the font size in your GNOME, they're useless, <laughs> right? So um, all the DDs have specialties, and they know they're they're competent with those. And then they have things that they're really not competent with, and that's totally okay, because you don't need to be an Uber DD or something. You just need to be good at what you do, which is why you chose that particular topic. Actually, there are two good things in this. For one, uh, you make people aware that you're not one of those who know everything, and make them aware that even DDs are only human, and that they, that they don't need to feel shy to address Debian developers because they are some kind of clever person. They also lack knowledge in certain fields. On the other hand, you could try to not just respond, sorry, don't know anything about it, but to help them find, get to the right person who has knowledge about yeah. this area. And usually DD are more connected to other people's and know where to, uh, where to send people along if such questions mm -hmm. came up. But I, I think actually that Carolina raised a, a very good point um, about people asking themselves like, have I achieved a, an amount of knowledge that qualifies me to, run, uh, to apply for the new maintainer <laughs> process? Um, now, obviously, there's no simple answer. It's not like you can give out a questionnaire saying if you can answer 10 questions with yes, you, can, you should run for the new maintainer process. Um, still, maybe we should address that question somehow, uh, maybe in the Debian Women FAQ or in the new maintainer FAQ, if there is one, or something like that, and just um, try to answer that question somehow, saying, well, uh, you can, um, you, so you consider becoming a DD. Um, ask yourself this, is there a field of Debian that you've been working in actively and continuously? Um, are there people who have recognized your work as beneficial to the project or as useful? Um, if so, do apply. And I would really say to, to, to do this on such an abstract level, like not do you speak three programming languages, but uh, have, you, have you done a kind of contribution that's been useful and have you done it for a while? Maybe a year or something, I don't know. Um, Francesca, can somebody give her a microphone? I'm oh, sorry, you, Daniel, you wanted to say something. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I think that another important thing about that is that people who work uh, teams uh, or so on with uh, someone uh, who is already not a DD uh, need to try to push her or him uh, when it's time to to the NM process because uh, I became a DD only because uh, Ronda and Zobel and people uh, with whom I work uh, pester me all day for some weeks and then uh, I, I understood that I could become a DD and uh, I yeah, was worthy. It's the same. I mean, I've, like, I became a DD like three years ago. Basically, I was also uh, f forcefully motivated. <laughs> Um, so I did apply and I've never looked back, like I don't regret. I was, at the time I thought, oh, I don't know, maybe in a year or two, <laughs> but then they kind of pushed me and I went for it. And I never thought I, should, I joined early or I'm not knowledgeable enough or anything like that. So do, do apply, do apply. Um, I just wanted to point out that we've been talking a lot about people feeling like they need to be worthy to contribute to the project. And there's sort of two points that I want to make on that. One is that from the new maintainer process itself, I learned a lot. Oh yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so that means that I, there was a lot that I didn't know before the new maintainer process, and obviously there's still a lot that I don't know. And so I think we should make it clear that the application to the new maintainer process is not 
oh, I'm already good with everything that's ready for the project. You'll learn as, as part of it. And then the second thing is that um, in terms of worthiness, uh, what you, I, th I really think that what you said about is there a field that I've contributed to for a while, the interesting part there is for a while, um, are people committed to the project? In my mind, that's what makes you ultimately worthy of being a DD, is that you're committed to the project and that you want to see the project succeed. Yeah. And you're going to figure out how to do whatever you need to figure out how to do to make that happen. And so stressing instead the commitment to the project instead of any particular grandiose goal of absolute technical mastery, yeah. um, I think it's important to stress the commitment instead of the technical. Yeah, part. I mean, it's, uh, when, I, when I did this silly thing with Alex on Debian Day, we did, um, for a reason, pick a year. We said that we should like, have, have this ending that kind of tells people uh, what, you do, what you need to do. Because it's the usual question when you talk about being a non-uploading DD, people afterwards approach you and they ask you what to do, what they have to do for it. So we picked a year because we thought it would be a sensible thing. Um, and I guess it's really something roughly in that, in that region to really show that you are like, there's a kind of trustworthy, continuous uh, dedication to the project. And that we do need, definitely. Um, I just want to, I want to say two things. One is that um, there's a BOF tomorrow that I'm helping lead called Debian for Shy People, which is about these issues that I hope to see some of you at also. And second is to say that uh, since this is a Debian Women specific BOF, I wonder if Debian Women has any particular goals that it concretely wants to achieve in the next concrete time period so then I can figure out how I can help best uh, help it achieve that. Um, well, we don't, ha we don't have numbers, like we want to have 20 EDDs by 2000 something. Um, I guess we're really just happy for everybody who joins, but we've got a comment from IRC. Yeah, from, from IRC it is suggested, uh, I read it as it was written, please make the silent women in the room talk before the talk ends. <laughs> and uh, someone added, um, what one thing do you think would help most question around the room or something to make those silent people? So how about speak? that? How, how about the ladies in the room uh, who have not yet said something would just really quickly introduce themselves and say hi? We are very close to the finish of the I know, the session, I, get, I get big gestures please. from the back, but I cannot parse them. <laughs> So are you telling me I should go on? Who, who starts? Or are you? No. Let's just do it, you know. Yeah. They, they, they will cut us off, but until then, let's, you know, <laughs> revolution and all that. Just introduce yourself shortly and wave to the camera. Wave to the camera. <laughs> I'm Carol. I'm working with Debian about four or five years. I will be there in Shy People Buff. And it's a little bit difficult to me to speak with all of you looking at me. Please? Yeah. And I think that the worst thing about... Uh, I can't... Uh, I think that I can't apply yet. I want to one day. Mm -hmm. But I think that I'm not worth yet. I don't, well, what have you been doing in these five years? I mean, that's a really long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do? Like translations or documents? I work in translations in localization for Brazilian Portuguese. Okay. I work in DTTP. And I work in our local user group, Debian local user group. And... <laughs> I work in the events team in Brazil. In okay. We have a lot of events, big events in the south of Brazil where I live. And uh, I work in the booth there. Because of it, I feel comfortable this year to help Luca in the merchandise team. Okay. And but that's such a whole lot. I mean, may I introduce you to Francesca, who's been in the exact same situation. 
uh, and ran for DD and got the DD. And maybe you two just want to get together after the talk. Uh, I mean, you no, no, you must, you must, <laughs> really. Um, thank you very much also for that. The one problem, now this year, I decided to adopt my first package and I'm doing it at night. So maybe in the end of this year or 2000, uh, before the end of the world, I will become well, a DD. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alicia. Hello, Maria. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You can just introduce yourself if that's all. It just, there's a lady sitting next to you. Maybe she would like to say hi real quickly. <laughs> With my name is Monica, and in Irk is Dunedna. Um, well, my English is horrible. <laughs> And I've been packaging some packages since, I think, months. I don't know how much, how many months, maybe six or seven. I'm trying to, <coughs> I was one of, one of the girls that I don't know where to uh, help. I want to help, but I don't know where. And I think I have finally, I, I am trying to help in QA uploads now, mm -hmm. uh, solving some books, bugs, and also in OpenStreetMap team, that is a micro team, but I like it. And I don't know why I don't apply. Maybe I'm scared of the commitment or, well, <laughs> that's it. I'm sorry, I, I know many people would like to introduce themselves, uh, but we have had a real request from the people doing the video work to finish the session some right. time. <laughs> we already ran over that limit. So, uh, well, thank you, Maike, and thank you to everybody. And please continue this, uh, this uh, mutual uh, introduction and, well, this great yeah. uh, work you've been doing. I don't know if you have some final words to close with. Again, what? Some final words you, can, you want uh, as a coordinator uh, well, to close Everybody with? who didn't say something, do feel free to approach me or Francesca or Enrico or really anybody in here uh, all the time. We're here all week. <laughs> I guess that's what I want to say.